I'll sing you the song of two heroes from the good old U.S. of A. The greatest country in the whole wide world, at least that's what some people say. Now Billy, the first of my heroes, he didn't know what to do. Graduating high school, he knew there were no jobs except for flipping burgers at minimum wage. Living with his mama in the trailer, Jesus, like living in a cage. So he went down to the recruiting office and signed his name to be a defender of freedom, to play the ball game. A strike of lightning had cracked him on the back. He was in a hot desert country he never heard of, called Iraq. In the hot sun where all he could do was bake, surrounded by people that hated him, fighting a war that was a mistake. He saw his best friend's head blown out of the car because somebody had saved $10 on a cheap metal bar. enough to make him go crazy to realize that he was losing his mind in a living hell making billionaires fat. They called it PTSD. They had to give it a name. A lethal combination of hatred fear and shame. They sent him home. They said he was afflicted. But there was no home. His ma had been evicted. No forwarding address. His head was full of craziness, life a fucking mess. He was panting like a rabid dog, afraid he was going to die. The VA told him to go back in November, and that was in July. So there he was, broke and homeless, on that Albuquerque night, drunk as a skunk, as he climbed the hill, trying to get out of the light. He fixed a peanut butter sandwich, got high, and lay there staring at the sky, hoping that the moon's soft glow could ease the horrors that kept him awake, could help him unknow. Uniformed man appeared in the darkness below. Frightened, he stood there and raised his peanut butter covered knife. Crack, crack. The night air rustled. Crack, crack. The bullets whistled. And it was there that Billy ended his life. His body was riddled, his brain was fried. That's how hero number one died. I'll sing you a song of two heroes from the good old U.S. of A. The greatest country in the whole wide world. At least that's what some people say. Now hero number two, I'll call him Frankie. He got out of his high school class. He shipped right off to Afghanistan. He wanted to kick some ass. But they had been fighting there for 600 years, and the hatreds ran deep. In a land where skin was dark, everybody was the enemy, and life was cheap. No sergeant, no captain, no general could even begin to explain what it was they were doing there or what it meant to win. blasted away while he was in the latrine. He watched a pal die, got shot up and discharged for all the horrors he had seen. For the dangers, the wounds, and the decorations he had earned. 
everybody is the enemy, was the only lesson he had learned. They gave him an honorable discharge when he got his release. It was really easy to get a job with the local police. He was just what they needed in a fast-growing station. He knew how to drive a tank and had done enhanced interrogation. So on that fateful night in Albuquerque, our story meets its twist. When Frankie on duty saw Billy on the hillside and something in his mind went amiss, The days of violence in Kabul where he learned his lesson well. Everybody is the enemy, life a living hell. He didn't give it a second thought, he raised his pistol and shot. Crack, crack. The night air rustled. Crack, crack. The bullets whistled. When they ran up on the hillside, Billy was dead. Not to wear a line of duty, Frankie's partner said. And Billy lie there, his face in the gutter, streaked with blood and peanut butter. Frankie didn't have to forgive himself. He knew it was cowardly to forgive. And deep down, he knew that everybody was the enemy. And that's how hero number two had to live. I've sung you the song of two heroes of the good old U.S. of A. The greatest country in the whole wide world. At least that's what some people will say. Now I wish I had them all, but I don't. Though I could go on singing. 